work surrounding gender gap and research is that I do uh, a study on the participation of women uh, and the barriers they face and their motivations to contribute on, on Wikipedia. We'll talk about that later. Um, and uh, my co-presenter for this session is Reem Al Kashif. Reem has an MA in linguistics and uh, her master's thesis was on the content gap in Arabic Wikipedia. Uh, before I go into the slides, I have a few disclaimers to make and a few knowledge gaps to acknowledge. Um, in order to prepare this presentation, we looked at uh, 52 research papers about, which, about gender gap and Wikipedia and their intersections. So uh, when we had a look, we found that when we talk about Wikimedia as a whole, uh, it's usually Wikipedia that comes into the research space. So we have absolutely zero knowledge about what happens in other uh, Wikipedia sister projects like Wikisource, for example. We do not have any research on the gender gap on Wikisource, for example, or Wikicode. So that's a knowledge gap we want to acknowledge. And secondly, mm, most of these studies have been conducted either in Europe or in the US, and there have been fewer researchers coming from other parts of the world. So uh, this, uh, the participants of the study are more likely to be people from those geographical regions. Again, um, when we talk about the gender gap here, um, all, all the researches we have read is about women and not about queer people. So we have absolutely no knowledge about how queer people edit Wikipedia and their experiences in editing Wikipedia. So we have a big knowledge gap out there as well, which we need to like, fix in the coming years. So that said, uh, I will go to the slides. Uh, the, uh, for the basic question which people ask you when you s do an outreach event for women is that, oh, what proportion of women are women? Uh, what proportion of the editors on Wikipedia are women? And there are different numbers for that. So I put them up together in one slide, uh, showing different user surveys and you know the percentage of fe the female participation in all those surveys. And you can see that the numbers range from 9% female to 22% female, uh, depending upon which study you want to choose to use. And all these studies have been uh, conducted by the WMF. And we don't have like many other people who, who have been looking into this area. And also these have been surveys and not uh, the method chosen for, you know, to find the female participation has been user surveys and not anything else. So we know that uh, women are li less likely to participate in surveys compared to men. So these numbers may be skewed in that way as well. And you also see that the latest of those surveys happened in 2014, and we are now in 2018. So a lot of differences may have happened during that time frame. So keeping all this in mind, you can say that, OK, 9 to 22% of Wikipedia editors are female. Of course, there is also a bigger knowledge gap like we acknowledged here. Now, um, uh, in this presentation, I will be dealing with the participation gap, and my co-presenter will talk about the content gap. Uh, so one of the reasons why women are said to participate less on Wikipedia is because of difference in self-confidence. It could be that women are socialized to be less self-confident, or it could be that their experiences make them less confident, uh, less self-confident, and we do not know about that. Uh, but we, we kind of know that women are less self-confident to edit Wikipedia, and that could be internal reasons within Wikipedia or external reasons. We do not know about that also. Um, but it says that uh, beliefs about one's competence explain a large share of gender gap on Wikipedia editing. And female Wikipedia users have a lower confidence in their expertise and a lower confidence in their value of contribution. Uh, so there is something going on in terms of um, how people perceive themselves as self-confident and the gender gap. Are women's edits reverted more? We know that as newcomers, uh, female newcomers are reverted more than males. And, but when they are reverted, being reverted as newcomers has the same apparent effect on males and females. So women are reverted more, but um, the effect which they have uh, after being reverted is the same for men and women. So it could be that uh, the reason why we have fewer women becoming established editors could be because that um, there are fewer women coming in at the first place. And it could be that uh, a lot of women, a lot more women are reverted and they just choose to quit Wikipedia abruptly. Right. 
And uh, Wikipedia has been known to have a fighty culture. And how does this affect uh, women? Female contributors prefer to share and collaborate rather than to delete and change. And their behaviors on Wikipedia may be derived by personal motivations such as enjoyment and learning. And uh, articles with high female editor concentrations are more controversial. And this is something counterintuitive and I've been thinking about. And uh, female Wikipedia users perceive high levels of conflict. And women also report, report more discomfort in editing others' work, which typically inf involves conflict. And also they are more sensitive to getting negative responses to critical feedback. So this is all we know about Wikipedia's fighty culture and how it affects women. Now this, uh, this slide is from my own study which I, uh, where I interviewed uh, Indian women uh, contributors and asked them about the barriers they face and their motivations to contribute. So these are some of the themes that emerged from my study. And uh, a lot of women said that um, they have too little leisure time and that is the reason why they cannot contribute so much. And um, there is, uh, well there is con conflicting evidence for this. Uh, some studies say that um, having too little leisure time doesn't affect the capacity to edit Wikipedia. And some studies say that, oh, uh, women have too little leisure time and that's the possible reason why women do not edit. So we have both sides and we do not know yet. We do not have strong evidence to say that uh, the fact, uh, one of the factors that leads to women's uh, less contribution is uh, the lack of discretionary time. And uh, since there are fewer women leaders, uh, they have fewer role models which women can relate themselves to. So um, because there are too few women editors, fewer, fewer women become leaders. And um, that, and the new newcomer woman cannot identify any woman leaders, so she is less likely to contribute and she apparently quits. And the perception that Wikipedia is a male space, it dampens their motivation to edit. So when you think that it's a bunch of men hanging around and writing articles, uh, women are less likely to get into that space and uh, make a mark there. And an important thing, uh, which is especially true in developing countries, is that women do not possess devices to connect to the internet. And therefore, they have poorer internet skills. And sometimes the internet use is limited to a shared device. So this device is shared between all members of the family. And uh, this use of this shared device is dictated by an elderly male member of the household. So um, the device will be kept in a public space, um, perhaps in the living room of the house. And then the use of internet is constantly monitored. So women feel less secure to go to websites and explore on their own. And women also did not get support from the community when male editors harassed and threatened them. And during my interviews, it becomes more and more evident that it's not the harassment itself that makes women to like feel bad about Wikipedia, but uh, the reaction of the community after the harassment has taken place. Uh, when the harasser would have been a um, very influential man in the community, uh, people, I mean, other editors, they do not like care about the harassment, they see as if it didn't, did not happen, or they sometimes say, ask them to report to an authority, and like they do nothing else. So because of lack of support after they have been harassed, it's the most important thing that makes them you know, feel bad about Wikipedia than the harassment itself. Of course, the harassment does um, influence their, like uh, make them feel bad, but not getting adequate support after the harassment also is an important factor for women to not uh, keep contributing. Um, so after having read all these researches, I have just five points to make for you to remember. These are my takeaways. Um, uh, boost women's confidence and give them invitations to participate. We know that um, they have had less conf self-confidence than uh, men to edit Wikipedia. So you have to invite them to be able to like participate on Wikipedia. It's not enough that you just open, a, open up a space and ask just people to come. You have to find and pick your women participants and invite them to be able to, you know, to make them feel confident to participate. Secondly, think before you revert or change something, especially if the editor is a newcomer. Um, uh, newcomers are more likely to make mistakes, but before you revert them, you just think whether it's how that would affect 
uh, the person's editing behavior in the future. So uh, it would be a good idea to revert that change or make an edit over that change and then go back to the talk page of the person who has made that edit and you know say why that edit has been reverted and so forth. So it will be good for their further Wikipedia contributions. And support women who report harassment. It's not enough that you just ask them to report harassment, but also support them emotionally and all mm, as a community. Uh, and if they feel that their the harassment has has been acknowledged in the community, they are more likely to uh, be in the community for a longer time. Make opportunities for women to socialize with other women leaders. Um, most communities have fewer women leaders than men, uh, and if there are women leaders make opportunities for newcomer women to connect with uh, more experienced women so that they can learn from each other. Um, and make shorter and easier contributions possible on Wikipedia. Um, this is something like um, more, so a lot of women said that they have too little discretionary time, so they do not have enough time to sit down for two hours and write a full article. So it would be, and some, some women do not possess devices to do that uh, in, uh, in the absence of a male supervisor. So what they could do is that when they are going on the train or when they are sitting on the bus on the way to the school or something, if they could make a shorter contribution, like changing a grammatical error or like uh, adding a category or something like that, these contributions should be made more easier to do, uh, and then they can do it on the way or they don't have to like spend a lot of discretionary time to be able to like uh, do that kind of contribution. So this is something we have to incorporate in the design of Wikipedia so that more women come and do the edits. Um, and finally, um, all these, um, I mean, uh, the research papers we have read are in English language, and most of these researches have happened in English, and very few in French and uh, Spanish and German, and we have zero knowledge about what happens in African languages or Asian languages, for example, so we cannot generalize these findings into um, a small language Wikipedia in India, for example, so we have to be, um, these only have limited value. Uh, in, in, in saying that um, they mostly are from the English Wikipedia. And now I uh, give the mic to my co-presenter where she will be talking about um, the content gap on Wikipedia. Thank you very much, Nessa. I am a huge fan of Nessa and please stop by and talk to her about her research. It's amazing. Um, so another question that research has been trying to answer is, do we have enough articles about women? Well, there have been a lot of research about this, and um, we, well, mainly, there are many missing articles compared to the Encyclopedia Britannica, and uh, it is sometimes harder for women to get articles, and this has to do with notability criteria and so on. Notability criteria on some uh, versions, or some editions of Wikipedia are harsher, and uh, they kind of make sure that women do not get as easy as men. So even this uh, study also suggested that maybe relaxing the notability criteria for women would be something that we might want to consider. But the good news is the situation has been getting considerably better. Better in, in the sense that uh, there are more articles that, have, that are longer, have better coverage, um, the other, the even the, exist the existing articles about women, there is no bias in which article gets to be featured on the home page of Wikipedia. So this is good. Things are getting better. Um, this might be perhaps um, due to the fact that Wikipedia is reflecting some change in the world because it has been found that Wikipedia actually does mirror what is happening in society. So since we do have some initiatives and things were getting considerably better, well, not considerably, but better. Um, maybe Wikipedia is mirroring this. And also, um, there have been so many initiatives inside the movement itself, competitions here and there, and edi editathons, and talks, and everything. So this might also have to do with this. So well, let's keep this up. Another question uh, was that, do articles about women look different in every way? Um, well, there have been research about internal links, and it has been found that internal links frequently lead to articles about men. If you look, uh, if you look at it from the different perspective, if men 
are related to women, if they are linked to women through inter interlinks, they are not. Uh, usually women are related to men, not the other way around. Also, if you look at info boxes, and that was very interesting, if you look at info boxes, uh, usually for articles about men, uh, about women, you would find the spouse attribute, but while you will not find this more frequently or as frequently in articles uh, about men. Also, articles are edited a lot by women um, are not long enough. So, well, this articles that are edited a lot by women has been considered for some studies as um, like a way to measure which articles are more uh, important for women or women like to read more about. And uh, apparently they are not long enough. Although we are trying to make them long, they are not. Also, another important question was that, was that, what about the content and the language of the articles about women? And this is my area of study, actually. Um, so it has been found a lot that relationship and family issues are discussed way more in articles about women than articles about men. Um, and this may have to do with society and how women are always kind of related to the home domain and relationship domain and so on. And then uh, the second thing, which is actually what I'm also doing, is words that convey subtle bias in the articles about women as well. And this has been proved a true for the English Wikipedia. So, the takeaways. First of all, please revise and add articles about women, especially historic figure in the uh, era in the 90s, in the 40s and the 50s, 1940s and 1950s, because those articles um, do not only suffer from the pre previously mentioned uh, issues, but they also suffer from the historic bias because the sources we use to add to those articles are also biased. So it needs a little bit of work and digging deep in, in like history and resources to get the facts and adding them to uh, the articles themselves. Also, please extend the articles that are heavily edited by women, which means that we have to identify first what are the articles that are heavily edited by women, and then we have to in increase our um, contributions to these articles. Another thing we could do is that double-checking our notability criteria. We do not have to give women a hard time when they are trying to get an article on Wikipedia. And through the conference, I have been talking to several people, and it turned out that even without research, this is something that is real. Um, women in African context especi especially are not always um, notable or as notable as men, although they are very notable in their communities. So we might need to check this, each of us in his different or specific community, language community that is. Also, please be careful with internal links. Uh, try to revise them and see which articles are rightfully linked to the articles about women and if the men article are not linked to the women article. Let's just make it equal. Another thing we could do is to add an equal amount of details about all topics and articles about women. We do not really need only to focus about um, relationship and family matters. And if we are going to do this, well, we better do this as well for the articles about men. But in all cases, let's just make it something that is relevant to the person we're talking about. Um, also, one more thing we can talk about, and this has to do with language, uh, the neutral point of view policy. I mean, there have been various uh, modifications to the policy over the years, but it could use more work because it needs more specificity when it comes to what to do, what to write, what not to write, and so on. And of course, we can use all the research that has been done on language and to take um, like some hints for it, from it and add it to the policy. Um, let's also, this is something that is very intuitive, avoid using words that introduce bias, and let's use verbs in describing the actions of women. So rather than saying, uh, so and so was stubborn, so and so me being a female was stubborn in a certain situation, you could just say that she refused to do something in that certain situation, which makes a huge difference. You're describing what happened in that situation, not how she is all the time. Um, yeah, and also do more research on language editions. As Nessa was saying, mainly all the research that has been done on gender gap, it, 
it mainly was in English, N not too much on many other languages, and certainly other languages mm, like Arabic and Indian and so on, they're just not on the map. Uh, finally, uh, do make sure that you include info boxes um, that you just do not include the attributes in the info boxes just because the person you're writing about is a woman. Uh, so you need to mention the spouse. Uh, if you just ask yourself, if I was writing about a man, would mentioning the spouse be important here or not? Also, please do, uh, uh, it, it is not really obvious, I mean, not really clear here, but this is a page on Wikipedia. It is called Writing About Women. It is very, very good. It has been written recently by many people, and it is very good. It is a valuable resource that you can go to, and uh, before an editathon you are having about women and so on, you can read that, you can get some tips, and you can share it with your people. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, time for questions. Any questions? Yes, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't really see because the li the light is blinding here. Um, okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Hi, thank you for this. Uh, so I'm Aaron Halfaker. I'm a researcher at the Wikimedia Foundation, and some of my studies have suggested that uh, editathons that target articles about women or target women's interest articles have been super effective in this area. I didn't see that in the takeaways that you listed, and so I was wondering what your opinions were of these targeted editathons, and if you've seen uh, the effects of that. Um, uh, well, the researches which we have read, they were peer-reviewed research, research papers published in journals, uh -huh. so we haven't have read anything about targeted editathons and how they help women. So I cannot make a statement on that. But from my personal experience as an outreach person, I see that when uh, we conduct events specifically for women, they are more likely to stick on. And when they are in a mixed group, it's difficult for them to ask questions. And sometimes they feel that when a male person is asking a question, they cannot, I mean, they are not invited being there. So targeted editathons uh, have been I mean, they have done good things in my experience, but um, I cannot generalize it, of course. Yeah. Gotcha. Just to clarify, this is peer-reviewed research that appeared in a journal, so we'll just sync up afterwards. Right. Self-promotion. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just a quick question about the reform and policy. Can you please re uh, repeat the part because uh, I was. Uh, slightly distracted by some communications, and I, I want to be, uh, I want to be uh, that that part really clear. Reform this is policy? this is, uh, sorry, uh, the reform and pov policy, mm -hmm. because uh, this is actually a, a very interesting point in the Italian community. So I, I really would like to get well, to know better. Thank you very much. Um, as I can see that the neutral point of view policy, as it is right now, it it has gotten to a point that it has details about what to do and what to write specifically, what to write and how to write about people, people in general, and also there is a section about women as well. But as I see it right now, it is helpful, but not that helpful, because there are still things that have been found in research that are not included in this uh, policy. Um, so my suggestion was that we should go over the research that has been done already and try to incorporate some of the results from that research into the, the policy in order to update it. And also, this, this is just my suggestion now, that we can also do some sort of maybe a survey or something to understand also what might introduce bias to people. So that could be complementary to the research itself. So that's, that's basically the whole idea. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'm just before um, we are done, I just want to show you something that might be of interest to some of you. Um, women's tech store. I think we do have Denise and uh, Michelle or, or all right. Um, so yeah, this is an event that is happening in, uh, on October 26th and 27th in the Netherlands. You can visit this link for more information. It is 
absolutely fantastic. It is basically a tech event for beginners and also like experienced developers, specifically women, uh, to share the knowledge with, with each other. Uh, if somebody knows better, he could, she could teach the other person and so on. They work collaboratively on um, technical projects for MediaWiki and for the Wikipedia all in all. So that's pretty interesting. Please make sure to talk to Denise or go to the link. Also, um, Nessa and I would like to invite you to the lunch, Wiki Women lunch. That would be at 12.30 in the uh, restaurant, in the breakfast room, where you had breakfast. Uh, thank you very much. I had a question for you. Um, have you considered, sure. you know, something that's worked well in the Me Too movement is public shame of particularly egregious malefactors. Mm. Have you considered that um, there's obviously systemic forms of harassment, and then there are just really terrible examples, mm. and whether that could actually have an impact on this, explaining that this behavior is unacceptable? Uh, I don't know really, but most of the talk, I mean, most of the um, interactions uh, between Wikimedians happen on a public space. So they happen on talk pages, they happen on village pumps. So I think we, among the, I mean, if harassment occurs, there is always evidence, there is usually evidence for that, unless the harassment is outside the Wikimedia platform. Uh, for example, some women report harassment on social media, for example, that we do not know. But most of the time, the harassment happens on uh, wiki pages, which is kind of live and real, and everybody sees it. So that itself is a form of like public shaming, which might be impacting people's behavior, but we do not have like adequate research for that. Thank you. <laughs>